Hello, everybody. Liberty, what's your first name? I always forget, man. What is your first name? Let me uh, go over here to make sure I can squeeze out every penny from YouTube as possible by monetizing this. Hold on a second. All right. This, uh, um, hold on a second. There's a great YouTube channel called Woke Preacher Clips. Woke Preacher Clips. Uh, you're just, I, I tell you, man, I'm not of the same uh, faith as these people. It's just, put, <laughs> there's some people, I, oh, here goes the big boy. Oh, cry. Uh -oh. Everybody, oh, no, no growling. When I hear these Woke Preacher Clips, I'm like, these these guys, we're not, we're not of the same religion. Let's just put it that way. That's okay. That's okay. I just, uh, it's a chuckle. Come on, man. Let's get this party started. Here we go. Live. There we go. Let's make sure I turn on the little button to get any kind of money I can squeeze out of YouTube. I'm going to before they ban me outright. I'm going to squeeze every penny out of YouTube I possibly can. All right. What are you doing, bubs? All right. Good. All right. So looks like we're good to go there. All right. So, Denise? George. All right. So, George has emailed me. That was you, right, George? You just emailed me earlier about my uh, my position on gold change at all. Uh, the answer is no. My position on gold has not changed. I think five to ten percent of your liquid net worth to have. Uh, uh, no, that's that's not true. That's not true. This isn't true. That's not true, dude. You're missing. You're missing it. I'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. So Marie crushes because she already reviewed my book. A couple other people that are on this board right now have not already reviewed my book, so they're not crushing. I'm not going to say who they are. I call them the crush less people. Maria's reviewed it, and Warner's reviewed it. I got an email for some uh, lady who's lacking in uh, the 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 lacking in uh, what I'm looking for. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Whether, I'm drawing a blank. The word I'm looking for, but she goes. Warner has. Uh, <laughs> He's a high achiever, so they laughed. It was funny. It was funny. Um, what was I just talking about? Anyway, so George said, hey, how much gold? I still think 5 to 10% of your liquid liquid net worth should be in gold and silver coins. What are you doing, bro? Um, hold on a gold and silver coins. Now, is 5 to 10% of my liquid net worth in gold and silver coins? No. Um, I, would, I tried to buy about $5,000 a year to gold and silver coins. I haven't. Um, I didn't do any last year, frankly. I got hit so hard in taxes in 2021 for wait, 2022 for I can't remember. 2022 for 2021 taxes. I'm still scrambling to pay the tax man back. I mean, I paid it back, but I paid it on my home equity line of credit. And as such, uh, I wasn't really doing much other than um, the base. I scrambled to pay the tax man back for last year, 2021. And then scoring a enough way to make me right on this year, which I did. So I actually getting four thousand bucks back. I can't believe it. Thank the good Lord, because I owe the state of Georgia some money. So I scrambled hard. So I'm squared away with taxes. That's good. But I still have a big old home equity line of credit. I'm like, oh. So I, you know, I and I just hate it. So I haven't bought any gold last year, and I probably won't buy any until I get my debt paid off. Of having to pay the tax man. It sucks. No other way around it. But um, you know, what are you going to do, man? I've actually put down, over the last three years, I paid $300,000 down on my mortgage. You know what I'm saying? So I haven't really built any investable assets. I've stayed, I've made a little bit of money, not much. I've stayed pretty level. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I was in the market. And I'm still a little bit in the market. Just FYI, I'm going to buy uh, 100 shares. I think I was going to buy 100 shares of Southern Company tomorrow. And I was thinking about buying 100 shares of Costco, but I think Costco is trading a little bit too much more than I want to buy 100 shares with. I think Costco, um, yeah, Co oh, yeah, I'm not buying 100 shares of Costco. Man, it's 493. So I won't be, I'm, I'm trying because 493 times 100 is that 49,000 bucks? Oh, yeah, I'm not buying 100 shares of that. Hell no. So I'll probably buy 15 shares of Costco. Yeah, 15 shares of Costco, 100 shares of Southern Company. And I'm, I'm basically, I don't like having odd lots. Uh, 15 shares of Costco is an odd lot. And I, I like having round lots. And round lots just means 100 shares or, you know, 100 shares, something divided by 100. But uh, I was thinking about it. I'm going to just start buying. The, and I know, look, Costco's woke. I get it. 
However, they have a good service that I use a lot. I use Southern Company a lot. There's, I'm guaranteed they're probably woke too. The facts are though, I get a benefit from those companies. Every, I mean, hell, Charlotte was at Costco today. I was at Costco two days ago. I use Southern Company for my electricity. I get a benefit from these companies. I don't think Costco pays a dividend. It's small, but Southern Company pays a dividend. Um, and uh, and it, it, like, it is what it is, dude. I mean, and so I, I, I do not want to hire woke companies to manage my money. But I will uh, invest in somewhat woke companies in order to receive a benefit uh, that I get from as a as a uh, for the products they provide. There's no other way around it. You know, we got a prescription today, Charlotte here for nine bucks at Costco Pharmacy. You know, CVS now has no gender bathroom, so a girl can go in and see a, a grown man's ding dong. And I'm like, this is freaking nuts. CVS and kiss my big fat behind. You know, could Costco go that route? Probably at some point they will. Um, but I, you know, CVS sucks. Screw you, CVS. You suck. Um, but, you know, Costco, they're, they're run by libs. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I do get a big benefit from them. I don't get any benefit from CVS, so they can kiss my big fat behind. Um, and Southern Company, again, is the is an electricity company that I use here. They generate the electricity. They do have a nuclear power plant that hopefully will be in operational here soon. I don't know. Anyway, so I, I haven't been able to buy, I don't have 10 to fit 5 to 10% of my own liquid net worth in gold. Um, but because I, that means I have to take some of my assets that I'm using to pay the tax man to purchase gold and silver. I just don't want to do that. I want to get my desk paid off. So anyway, but that's a good question, George. Appreciate it. Um, Pablo got shut out quick. Yeah, knucklehead. All right, so no, people did not. Ah, geez, are we still doing this? People born after 1960 do not get a lower wage index. Ah. Ah, ah, ah. This is so frustrating. Ah, this is so frustrating to me. So the hubba bub back in was it the the second quarter as a 2020. If you're born in 1960, there's a big concern that you're going to have a lower average wage index and you'd lose like 9.6 percent of your social security benefit compared to someone born in 1959. Oh, I can't believe we're still debating this. This is this is frustrating. Um, it, don't forget, Liberty still thinks we went to the moon. All right, so that, this doesn't shock me actually that uh, Liberty, um, you know, a guy who's adamant of us going to the moon doesn't know what's going on when it comes to Social Security because obviously Liberty is getting his facts from you know the the right the right wing who won't steer him wrong. I'm, I'm goofing on you, Liberty. So pipe down. Um, anyway, so that's and, and what happened was what frustrated me so much on all that crap, because my man, Andy Biggs from AEI, who used to be second in command of Social Security Administration under George W. Bush, who I interviewed, he had written an article in like May of 2020. Yeah, it's 2020 talking about that. And that was legitimately a concern in May of 2020. The, the first week of July 2020, the, the commissioner of the Social Security Administration, the chief actuary, I'm drawing a blank his last name. I can't remember. He went before Congress and he made the same claim that Andy had talked about in May. And Andy kicks ass it, even though AEI, I don't trust him as far as I could kick him. But I do like Andy Biggs at American Enterprise Institute. The chief actuary went before Congress and basically said verbatim what Andy Biggs had said you know, two months previous. The problem with an idiot chief actuary of Social Security it pisses me off is because if he just looked around him and he could have seen that the decline in the GDP was already over. Come the second week of June, we had numbers that showing that we're getting out of the, the, the quick recession we were in. Anyone who had half a brain could have seen this. And the chief actuary not seeing this, it just, it was, it just, it was inexcusable. So anyway, all these idiots ran with that, and it pisses me off because AARP ran with that even in December. They ran with it saying you're going to lose, if you're born in 1960, you're going to lose 9.6% of your Social Security. And it was simply fake. It was fake news. It's based on the contingency that the Q3 of 2020 would be worse than Q2 2020. And that by the time the middle of June, which is still in Q2, rolled around, the, the, the numbers were going up significantly. Because all the freaking government spending. It, it just it so infuriates me that people fell for this. And now Liberty's falling for still all these years later. He's saying if you're born after 1960, your average wage index will be lower than it born before. And this is this nonsense. Why do people fall for this crap, dude? It's nonsense. Stop. 
Stop it. It's like it's like a telephone game on steroids, man. I don't understand it. So ARP. Now remember, I got an email by somebody who said I, I literally because we we destroyed this back in 2020. Maybe Liberty wasn't part of the YouTube channel back then. <coughs> we destroyed it, and I was right. Everybody else was wrong uh, because we knew that Q3 would come around. We had a growth in Q3 because it's contingent on those three months of Q3, basically. Quarter three is what the AWI is contingent on for what your index wages are going to be. And if Q3 of 2020 was worse than Q2 2020, we would have been a world of hurt if you're born in 1960. Turns out we knew that Q3 2020 was going to be higher, much higher than Q2 2020, so we didn't have to worry about that. But it didn't matter because it's clickbait. Clickbait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it got people, the whole thing, the Republicans going to take your Social Security, blah, blah, blah. The whole thing was so freaking stupid. It's like so infantile, it's embarrassing. And then I'll never get this guy email me. He said, oh, my goodness, ARP. And this was in December of 2020. I was like, I can't. I literally, I just got no respect for anything. And so listen, just check this out. I was listening to uh, Bart Ehrman. You might not know who Bart Ehrman is, but he used to be evang evangelical who uh, did some deep dive into uh, with a guy named Bruce Metzger on the Bible, you know, the history of the Bible and whatnot, the actual, um, the Greek not the, the Latin Vulgate, but the actual Greek and the Hebrew, the Paleo-Hebrew and stuff. And there's a lot to – the at KJV, there's some some significance that leaves a lot to be desired. So it doesn't NIV, uh, for sure. And it, it, to die this is just to be silly. I mean, we have – there is some issues in there politicizing of both those things for sure. And it just – you can't deny it. That doesn't mean Jesus didn't live. It doesn't mean Jesus didn't rise from the dead and he's not our Savior. It just means at the end of the day, there is some issues. So Bart Ehrman took that. And he ran with it to, to basically propel a pretty significant career. And I actually like Barber. I got no qualm with the guy. But anyway, so I'm listening to him interview some lady from uh, Duke and uh, who also went to Columbia. So my red flags jump up and she talks like just like a spoiled brat is what and I just. So I'm hearing her talk and she's probably smart. She probably knows her stuff. And they're talking about the uh, NS, NRSV, the New Revised Standard Diversion Updated Edition. Two essentially, and I'm thinking, and I follow some guy on uh, the Bible, and uh, he says NR NRSV is the way to go. I said, really? I said, why? And and he did, I just I was kind of batting that around. I said, why is the NRSV so good as opposed to any other iterations of the, the translation of the Bible? From again, we don't want it from Latin to English. We want it from the you know, especially the New Testament from the Greek, all right? Because Latin is just we're talking about Jerome, you know. Then we look at your Erasmus. It's just no, we want it from the Greek, the original Greek. Um, the New Testament, the Old Testament is Paleo Hebrew and Aramaic. And so you got to look at that. You say, OK, hey, how do we you know, translate that? And there's a lot more to that. But be that as it may. Um, what, what, so what happens here is that Bart Ehrman is interviewing this lady and they're talking about NRSV, the updated version, blah, blah, blah. You know, and then and then she says something that jumped out at me. And I said, the National Council for Churches led the way on the NRSV. The NRSV. Do you all know who the National Council of Churches is? They're a bunch of freaking commies, dude. And they say, oh, they keep calling us commies. That's so true. Because you are. You're a bunch of commies. The National Council of Churches doesn't want you to own a firearm. They fall hook, line, and sinker for global warming. And we need uh, alternative energy and all that. And this is a political hack. That's not say the Southern Baptist Convention isn't political hacks or the freaking... UMC or the Catholic Church, for heaven's sake, out of the Pope Francis. We all know they're all political acts. But the fact that the NRSV is from the National Council of Churches tells me right in there the NRSV can't be trusted. It just can't be. Because how do I know? I don't speak Greek. I don't speak Latin. And I don't, certainly don't speak Paleo Hebrew. Hey, my man Alan. Right on, Alan. Sweet. Hey, my man Alan. You should follow his uh, channel, spaceaudits.com. Alan, just FYI, I was listening to your most recent video. Make sure you speak. I, I, you were very low. I, I have only listened to the first 15 minutes or so. But your one on Einstein was low. Make sure you get your volume up because I was listening to that. I was like, dude, I wish you could. I wish you talked louder. I know you said you get nervous a little bit. That's fine. But turn up the volume or something like that because I don't hear very well. And it's hard for me to hear. And uh, and then when it's when it's low, when it's hard for me to hear. Um, it's, it's somewhat garbled. Yeah, right on. Sweet. All right. Good, good, good. Absolutely. Um, it's just FYI, I don't hear well. I was in the army, you know, I fired M60s. And when you're a tough guy in the army firing M60s, you don't wear hearing aids and then or hearing protection. Of course, I love heavy metal, so I've been in many hardcore metal bands, shows, 
we got the stack of marshals right there. And uh, you're climbing up the stack of marshals so you can stage dive off them in the middle of time. You're getting, but you know, it's just, it was fun when you're a kid. And now I'm paying the price. I can't hear for crap, if that makes sense. And just ask my wife. She'll say, leave my son, <laughs> leave my son on a vacation. He said, dad, you're up here. We need you to be down here. And I said, ooh, okay. Um, yeah, right on. I figured there'd be loads of new info. That's, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Because, again, so here's my man, Alan, from Space Audits. He takes on Einstein. How dare you take on Einstein? Well, because this freaking Einstein was a fraud, dude. 100%. How dare you? Okay. Okay, that's fine. You're not, you can believe it. I get it. You can believe it. I don't believe the NRSV because I don't believe the people from the National Council of Churches don't know they're not. I don't trust that they're not lying to me. I don't trust any of these guys. Why? Because they lie in other things, man. I, we know for a fact the people who permeate Einstein lie. We know for a fact the National Council of Churches are commie scumbags. And as such, uh, right on, Kim. But I did put the monetization on there because I knew you'd be watching. Appreciate it, Kim. Sorry about your clown for a uh, the dark night. That sucks, Kim. But uh, better late, the better sooner than later to know he was a dark night. Anyway, so the point being is, I don't trust these people because they're all doing political agenda. Does that mean the freaking uh, I trust the Vatican? Hell no, I don't trust them all. But I do like the I do like reading the book and getting in front on my knees and praying to the Lord, the Creator of all things. And that is where you're, for me, that's all that matters, dude, is like, I don't trust, and, and, and I'm just, I can't, I think it's Jeremiah, where it says, don't trust men. Don't trust men. Trust your own instincts. All right, so I just want to, so I want to dive into something here real quick. Um, so I want to go to, probably you got to make up your mind, by the way. You are right here. So I want to start here, and then I want to go to this UN stuff, which is nuts. A good boy, Pablo. All right. Don't trust men. Don't trust me. But certainly don't trust some freaking right wing or left wing hack who's like, oh, my goodness, we're all going to die or we're all going to take away our guns and all this insanity. Just, Dude, you just came in. All right. I'm going to have to put you in the crate, buddy. You're not going to be able to do this all night long. All right. Bob, I went to go sit. Let's see. Look at this. This is what this one's talking about right here. That's what we want. Baby kid just laying there. Pablo goes back and forth and back and forth. Got ants in his pants. So check this out. Luxury beliefs and energy policy. This is what they want. The powers that be. And if you think the Republicans are going to save you from this, you're nuts. That doesn't mean you don't vote Republican. It just means if the Republicans get paid enough by the, the World Economic Forum, look at Dan Crenshaw. I mean, he's a clown. You know, even Matt Gates fell for it. I don't know. I don't trust that guy because if you have an initial green like we got to appeal to the young people by being green well you're going to say we got to appeal to young people by being pro-abortion we got to appeal to young people by being you know fluid if you know what i'm saying no you have to have a foundation of solid conservatism and if your initial reaction is we got to appeal to the young people by being this out of the other when it comes to societal issues that are absolutely bad for the society as a whole uh i don't want anything to do we all know dan crenshaw's a scumbag but with understand we all know lindsey graham's a scumbag so the question is, how much control does Lindsey Graham and Dan Crenshaw have over the GOP relative to non-scumbags? I don't know. I think they have a lot more than you think. And even though Trump said the Republican Party of yes is gone, I don't know that to be true. I really don't. And you can see that because you still see Charlie Baker. I know he's no longer governor of Massachusetts. Larry Hogan, no longer governor of, of uh, Maryland. Uh, Brian Kemp, he was in front of the World Economic Forum. My governor, Mike DeWine in Ohio, Ducey in Arizona, Greg Abbott. We got just a plethora of Republicans who are still at least half, if not more than half, in the cahoots with the, the big the Republican establishment. And that's just a fact. And, you know, maybe Trump comes around and I, I don't know. I, life's, I don't think so. He had a chance and he didn't do it. I mean, hopefully he will this time around. I just I'm not holding my breath. Anyway, so check this out. So we got this guy, Professor Norman Fenton, Professor Emeritus. So that means he's old. That means they can't freaking, you know, they can't ban him essentially because he's a professor emeritus. So he's like, you know, just kind of gone there because he did good work previously. Uh, he was interviewing Laura Ingraham, Ingram or whatever her name is. I don't, Laura just, I don't know, man. I used to like her a lot. I just, I don't watch, I literally don't watch Fox News at all anymore. I have no clue. I'd, I'd see a couple of clips and talk her on my YouTube channel and that's it. I don't watch anything at Fox News. Um, I can't stand Hannity. I haven't liked Hannity for a long time. She, I used to like her. I just, I don't. 
she obviously did something to her face, and that always makes me worried. When you're doing stuff to your face, I don't know, man. Why are you doing that? I mean, I get it. If you had some kind of issue, that's fine, but yeah, be careful. All right. Net zero is a rallying po policy battle of all major governments in the West and the intergovernmental agencies. In the UK context, Professor Fenton points out that all airports except Heathrow, Belfast, and Glasgow will close by 2030. No one will be flying at all by 2050. There'll be no new gasoline or diesel cars by 2030. And by 2050, road use will be restricted to 60% of today's levels. I know you're like, that's crazy talk. Hang in there. Food, heating, and energy will be restricted to 60% of today's levels by 2050. Beef and lamb will be off the menu. This is what they want. I'm going to show you from the UN. We're going to show you how evil these freaking people are, dude. And you're going to say, you're going to think that these guys, are, this isn't what they want. They want a total economic collapse, not for them, but for us. Many of the restrictions on mobility and social activity will be achieved by 15-minute cities. These are where daily necessities and services, such as work and shopping, can easily be reached with a 15-minute walk or bike ride. Professor Fenton put out his observations on Twitter and got 3.3 million views, which is why Fox News interviewed him. The consequences for net zero for the UK, and by extension, the rest of the collective West, of which we are, are not mere conjectures. They are derived from a detailed document issued by UK Fires, a research program funded by the government. Remember Boris Johnson, the right wing guy that I believed. I thought he was right, and I was what a fool I was. What a fool I was, dude. Oh, my goodness. That guy's a clown. The program enforced the government's policy strategy to achieve net zero by 2050 as per the 2019 Climate Change Act Amendment. The act was enthusiastically supported by every political party, Labor and the Tories, without public consultation and without a debate over the cost or benefits of the legislation. Matt Ridley, who writes, he used to write the Wall Street Journal, I don't know if he does anymore, put to his peers in the House of Lords as follows. I'm generally shocked by the casual way the other place, presumably the House of Commons, nodded through the statutory instrument in the 2019 Climate Change Amendment. Remember, the Tories owned everything, everything at that point. There is no challenge from Labor. It is all the Tories because freaking Boris flipping Johnson. And we all fell for it. We all fell for it. He said, oh, it's going to be, he's going to get us out of the, the Brexit. And uh, he said, yeah, I'll get you out of Brexit. Maybe, maybe halfway, half ass. But in the interim, we're going to freaking shove climate change down your throats, you clowns. How did a leading economy like Great Britain come to have governments from both sides of the aisle that promised their people uh, a future without the basic freedoms Western gov Westerners have taken for granted for over two centuries? This should be noted as the land of the Magna Carta. The first document to put in writing the principle that king and his government were not above the law. Predicated on, on fossil-fiable climate models and hockey said global warming. And again, this is going back to Einstein crap too, by the way, because we know for a fact the Eddington experiment did not prove Einstein's general relativity. It's a fraud. It's a fraud. And everyone falls for the fraud because smart people above us told us it was true. The smart people from uh, Duke and Columbia University told us the NRSV uh, New Revised Standard Version is true of the true nature of what the Greek to the English is. How do you know that? That's what they told me. They have, have they ever been proven to be liars or scumbag commies? Yeah. Why would you believe them? Because uh, I don't know any better. Yeah, that's not good enough for me. Uh, we are told that this is a scientific consensus, an established truth, which the BBC, for example, holds that it sees no need to allow contrarian views. Neither does physics.org, by the way. And when they actually, when anyone wants to publish an anti-Einstein paper, the guy who was an editor-in-chief at physics.org says, we're not going to allow any anti-Einstein people to come and publish something here. And then people say, oh, you anti-Einsteins, you've never been published in a legitimate you know, peer-reviewed journal. Yeah, because they won't allow it. You see how circular it is? Here's my man, Michael Crichton. I regard consensus science as an extremely pernicious development that ought to be stopped cold in its tracks. Historically, the claim of consensus has been the first refuge of scoundrels. Yep. It is a way to avoid debate by claiming that the matter is already settled. Whenever you hear the consensus of scientists agrees on something or other, reach for your wallet because you're being had. 
Let's be clear. The work of science has nothing to do with consensus. And just what Richard Feynman would say. And we can you know, debate about Richard Feynman. It was all that in a bag of chips. But he would say this. He would say this literally verbatim for sure. Consensus is the business of politics. The greatest science scientists in history are great precisely because they broke consensus. Ignaz Semmelweis comes to mind. There's no such thing as consensus science. If it's consensus, it isn't science. If it's science, it isn't consensus. What have luxury beliefs do but proclaim scientific consensus on climate change? Rob Henderson, who coined the term, defined them as ideas and opinions that confer status on the rich at very little cost. Yes, the rich, the white white knights. You see what I'm saying? Uh, We're going to take care of our... You know, those poor, those poor brown and black people are going to take care of them, but they're not doing anything to hurt themselves to take care of. It's only going to be on us, please. So this was an update. Uh, social, sociologist, this guy, centuries old theory of conspicuous consumption. He portrayed a shallow materialistic leisure class obsessed by clothes, cars, consumer goods, and climbing the social ladder. But today, it is argued, because material goods have become a nosier signal of one's social position, economic resources. The affluent have decoupled social status from goods and reattached it to beliefs. You know, uh, climate change. For, that's the biggest number one number right there, climate change, because they're not going to suffer. You and I are going to. With the rapid growth on the back of capitalism, material goods have become relatively cheaper, with affluence afforded to a much broader mass of the population. Consequently, virtue signaling and luxury beliefs now play dominant elite behavior, while conspicuous consumption of status and goods plays a lesser role and is even frowned upon. And that's why all these rich scumbags pretend they're poor. You know, they got their little trucker hats and they got their little you know, mechanic shirts and whatnot. It's freaking, they holes in their jeans and stuff is so freaking stupid. The more worth of a person today is related to his luxury beliefs. The fight against climate change is a crowning achievement. While the rich may drive their clean Teslas, ordinary people can bike or take public transit. Children of the upper bourgeois, which is going back to Bud Light, the idiot 39-year-old VP of marketing of Bud Light, went to Groton or whatever that freaking fancy schmancy good time rock and roll uh, you know, pre-college is. No one, none of us ever will go to Groton, man. They wouldn't let us on there. If they knew that I was coming to Groton, they'd say, ah, shut it down. Didn't want anything to do with us. We're all white trash compared to those guys. She, she went to Groton. She went to Groton. I don't know how you freaking pronounce it. Dude. She went to Harvard. Got an MBA from Wharton, I think, and then uh, and then all of a sudden out of nowhere is picked, yeah, as if she wasn't already uh, designated from point A to B and Coke in the in the, the elite class, and now she's saying we're gonna put Dylan, that stupid person, oh, dude, you're killing me, Bob. You gotta make up your mind. We're gonna put Dylan, idiot, on our face of our advertising campaign. This chick is stupider than a freaking pile of rocks, dude. Not Dylan Milvaney. I'm talking about a stupid VP from VP from Bud Light. Dumb as a freaking box of rocks. But because she was chosen by the elite, because she's the upper bourgeois, steeped in learning the tenets of the new left are unsurprisingly the moral shock troops of climate alarmism. Convinced of their cause, they throw soup at art masterpieces and glue themselves to block traffic and inconvenience people, and they never go to jail. But we're going to put these guys you know, in jail for January 6th. It's crazy. Luxury beliefs right here. Luxury beliefs come in with an inbuilt obsolescence because of the, well, luxury. The costs of radical climate policies are increasingly becoming apparent even to Europeans. The massive policy for EVs across the West offers an enlightened example of luxury beliefs and their costs on the average consumer. <coughs> As ideological green policies, Germans' reigning luxury belief are decimating the country's economy. Warnings of social and economic disaster by local observers have been multiplied in recent years. In an interview on Tuesday, longtime head of the Christian Democratic Union and a board member of uh, Audi and uh, Audi and Dahmer Chrysler, uh, he's uh, he accused the Green Party of technology hostility. The anti-technology emanating from the Ministry of Commerce is unbearable. Wherever we are, where our world market leaders, we have set about abolishing it. For several years now, hard work has been done to destroy the competitive advantage of the German industry or to hand it over to other nations. The technological advantage of German car makers through 150 years of experience with a combustion engine transmissions is being recklessly abandoned. Same happening here. 
We are running into a huge social conflict with this idiotic singular policy to drive on electric batteries. The recent decision by the EU to allow the sale of ICs, internal combustion cars, using e-fuels, which aren't proven at any scale and are expensive, after 2030, rather than suggested outright ban by then, signals somewhat of an important retreat. Last-minute objections by the German, Polish, and Italian governments Polish suggests that impending suicidal destruction of Europe's industrial base is coming increasingly to focus despite the luxury beliefs of the past few years. But then here we got the EPA announcing tough, tough new emission standards to force the phase out of gasoline-powered engines. Up to two-thirds of cars sold are be mandated to be electric vehicles by 2032. We don't have the grid for it. It's freaking idiotic. That's the 15-minute cities. They don't want you driving from here to freaking Tuscaloosa, from here to Fisher, Indiana. They want you local. Despite the relentless push for EVs, the working class has no interest. Just 2% of non-college respondents say they own an EV. And a mere 9% say they're seriously considering owning one. The only thing that makes me happier is the share of those who attribute climate change to humans as opposed to natural changes has fallen from 60% in 2018 to 49%. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. These guys still own, they own everything. They, they own the media. They own everything. Are we going to rumble? Give me a second. Frank, I can't remember. Oh, there we go. They own everything. Hey, Carson. There we go. All right, yeah, we got a bunch of people. Shadow777, Jeremy, right on. Uh, the What's up with that article? I will link to it right here, Jeremy. And just, you should go to, you should just sign up for What's Up With That. Get their emails. I get them every day. And I got a boatload of emails, uh, articles I want to read. And then I'm like, ah, and I read them. I sometimes I do videos on them. Some, most of the times I don't, just because there's so many. All right, so now I want to take it. So and this is what's happening. All right, so now let's go to, um, we're going to go to my favorite source in the morning, Anonymous Conservative Blog. Now, this guy is crazy, and I love it. He's crazy in a good way. And I'm going to show you something here. AnonymousConservative.com blog. And we're going to scroll down here. Uh, French energy giant hit hard by strikes, yes. Russian exports of coal to China growing. Shocking. Hedge funds made billions off food speculation. Eh, shocking. Europe's largest nuclear reactor plant begins delivering electricity 14 years late. Hmm, you know. right, let's keep going down. Um, so I want to go to the UN. Hold on a second. UN. Let's see. Uh, United. Right here. This is freaking nuts. The UN issues this report calling on for member nations to decriminalize sex between adults and minors. Should adults be allowed to convince kids to perform acts on them? The UN says yes. And I'm telling you right here now, we're going to look at this article because people say that's not what it says. It does. It does. I'm going to prove it to you right now. It does say this. And I'm not on Twitter, but uh, and I'll never be on Twitter because I don't trust Elon Musk, and I don't trust Twitter. So we're going to look at right here. The UN nations issued this report calling on member nations to criminalize sex between adults and minors. All right. So we're going to click on the link. This is freaking insanity. It's like we're going back to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. I know we've heard this many times, but at least back in the old days, it wasn't actually happening. But it is happening now. So we're going to go to – oops, one second. And it's freaking evil. And if you support the UN, you probably, you, this isn't probably the place for you because the UN is a bunch of freaking clowns and they should be thrown in jail. All right. So the UN AIDS right here, um, this is their new legal principles launched an International Women's Day to advance decriminalization efforts. All right. So we got, it won't say it in here because I, I read this. It won't say it in here, but it's going to say it right here. I'm going to show you here. All right, so the International Committee of Jurists, along with UN AIDS and the Office of whatever, officially launched a new set of export jurist legal principles to guide the application of internet, international human rights law to criminal law. They lay out a human rights-based approach to laws criminalizing relation to sex, drug use, HIV, sexual, reproductive, homelessness, and poverty. The UN needs to get the hell out of New York City. Get the freaking UN out of here. Uh, we must acknowledge that these laws not only violate human rights, but the fundamental principles of criminal law themselves. And if you think you're in a, uh, a country 
uh, that, <laughs> let's put it this way, is uh, independent of this, you're freaking nuts. We know that because what happened in 2020. We all, just like that, we all masked up and we all mandated stuff. You know what I'm talking about. We all did. Because the powers that be said, you will do this or else. And a couple of countries didn't. And what happened to the leaders of those countries? Yeah, they're no more. Uh, let's see. Um, the principles of the outcome of 2018 workshop by these freaking scumbags. Uh, let's see. The principles developed over five years are based on feedback. They were finally blah, 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 right here. They want to the principle folks on the impact of criminal laws prescribing sexual reproductive health rights, abortion, consensual sexual activity. It's just consensual, consensual. Gender identity, gender expression, HIV, exposure, transmission, drug use, possession of drugs, or personal use. Later, based on the inputs of civil society and other stakeholders, criminalization lead to homelessness and poverty was also uh, included. Criminalization linked to homelessness and poverty, i.e., you, can, you can't have people kicked out of a house if they're squatting in your private property. That's what the U.S. want, UN wants. Squatters' rights. All the hardcore kids, when I was growing up in the 80s, squatters' rights because they're idiots. They didn't know what private property meant. So if someone's squatting on your residence, you can't kick them out. You can't. I, I tell you, man, it's freaking nuts. But I'm telling you right here. They also perpetually let's see, continued overuse of criminal laws by governments, in some cases, arbitrary and discriminatory criminal laws, arbitrary and discriminatory criminal laws have led to a high number of human rights violations, but not about masking and jabs. They also perpetuate stigma, harmful gender standard stereotypes, and discrimination based on gender or sexual orientation. All right. So check this out. In 2023, 20 countries continue to criminalize or otherwise prosecute transgender people. That's their right to do so. If you're going to be sovereign, you have the right to do so. The UN and one world government doesn't want sovereign governments. 67 still criminalize same-sex sexual activity. 114, 115 report criminalizing drug use. Okay. Uh, more than 130 criminalize HIV exposure, blah, blah, blah. Um, and 150 still criminalize some sort of aspect of sex work. All right, so I want to, so again, that is just, they're just talking about, uh, what are we talking about, uh, sexual uh, approval. Like, we're not saying we're going to, we just want, where was it? Uh, you know, it's just, there's it it an agreement, sexual consent, assent. So we're going to read these March 8th principles. Watch this. This is where it gets freaking ugly, dude. And you're sitting there thinking, how the hell did this happen? I mean, it's not by happenstance, dude. These things have been happening for a long time, and we all fell for it. Look, she's in look, she's in barbed wire. Oh, my goodness. The International Commission of Jurists. They all should be sent to prison. So let's just read these. Uh, composed of 60 eminent judges and lawyers of all regions of the world who all should be in prison. All right? And they're in Switzerland. Why is that a big deal? Because that's where the, the world powers be reside in switzerland switzerland is the power center for the rockefellers the rothschilds and whoever preceded them it's where they all live so we're going to come down here and we're going to read what they say hey, this is from the u.n and i'm telling you right now if we can get this thing to open one second open up for me baby there we go we're going to come down here Criminal law thus may impel hostility, exclusion, and inequality, discrimination, marginalization of individuals and groups, sometimes a point of violence. As a result, human rights, democratic values. It reminds me of C.S. Lewis. It's not democratic if someone is ahead of another guy. He writes about the screw table letters. It's crazy. This led to a five-year painstaking process. A group of jurists elaborated a set of principles that can structurally address these ideas. All right. Associated with sex. Let's take a look here. Right here. Consensual sexual activities. All right, again, it's just consensual sex. You know, I should be able to have sex with anybody I want as long as it's consented. All right, let's read this. Let's keep going. We're going to come down to number eight right here. Legitimate exercise. Was it number eight or 18? Hold on a second. I think it was right here, number eight. Was it number eight? Legitimate. I could have sworn number eight. Uh, Sexual achievement, sex work, and so 16. Principle 16. That was on page 22. We're going to come down to page 22. Okay. Check this out. 18, 19, 20. 
21. Which one right here? Abortion. No one may be held criminally liable for their pregnancy loss, including pregnancy loss from resorting from a, a misbirth, stillbirth. See how they're throwing this in there? Or undergoing an abortion or for other decisions they may make around their pregnancy or, or childbirth. So they're throwing in, hey, there's a miscarriage. You can't throw me in jail for that. No one's throwing you in jail for that, Connolly. But if you provide an abortion, you're a doctor, you should be going to jail 100%. Shouldn't be doing that. I see how they th that's freaking these guys are so criminal law may not prescribe abortion. Abortion must be taken entirely out of the purview of criminal law, including for having aiding, assisting, or providing an abortion. Notice they don't mind. They you could be nine months. You could be nine months. They're gonna say you can abort. No other criminal offense, such as murder, manslaughter, or any other form of unlawful homicide, may be to abide for uh, maybe uh prescribe having an abortion. That's freaking evil. This is even worse. Consensus sexual conduct, conduct, irrespective of the type of sexual activity, may not be criminalized in any circumstances. Consensual same sex, as well as consensual different sex relations or consensual sex relations between trans, non binary, blah, 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 blah. Okay, okay, that's no big deal, whatever. Moreover, sexual conduct involving persons below the domestically prescribed minimum age to sex of consent to sex may be consensual if not in fact if not in law in this context the enforcement of criminal law should reflect the rights and capacity of persons under the age of 18 to make decisions about engaging in consensual sexual conduct and the right to be heard in matters pursuant to the evolving capacities and progressive autonomy persons under 18 years of age should participate in decisions affecting them with due regard to their age, maturity, and best interest. Did you hear that? Sexual conduct involving persons below the domestically prescribed minimum age of consent to sex may be consensual. In fact, if not in law. You saw it right here. This is some evil crap, dudes. Some evil mofos out there. This is the UN. Oh, but they're just trying to make peace on earth with the National Council of Churches. They just want peace on earth, man, with a climate change agenda. They just want peace on earth with the gun control advocates. They just want this freaking evil. It's an evil, dude. There's no other way around that. And I'm, just, I'm telling you, man. And I don't know how it ends. I mean, I know ultimately how it ends, but I don't know how it ends on this earth in terms of how evil they're going to make it for us. You see what I'm saying? Because they can't. I was just reading something the other day that China is going to, they're starting to pretend, and I, look, I don't know if I trust anybody on this anymore, but they're going to start drafting um, college age students now to join the military, not just, you know, so they have, you know, Xi, whatever the guy's name is, wants to have a more um, a reflective of society military. So if they, you know, invade Taiwan, for instance, they want, they don't want just working people, they want college people as well. They, you know, because China used to be basically, if you're from, the rural areas, you would go to the military and whatnot. And then the rich elite, you know, they would, this is what commies always do. Um, you know, the, the rich elite will, will never fight. They'll wage war where your sons and daughters get killed, but, you know, they'll never fight. It's not a whole lot different from here, actually. But anyway, so I just read that. It's like, oh, so, so you know, China's going to be engaging in more of a draft. So what, what, do, you, what do you think happens in the United States, dude? You know, because we haven't had any big wars since Vietnam where th hundreds of thousands of people died. And we haven't. You know, we've killed a lot of people. Don't get me wrong. Um, but those days are kind of over for the time being. So the question that comes to mind is they can't kill people off by war anymore. At least we can see. I don't think there's a lot of young men who are going to be eager to join the military as our patriotic duty to go over there and kill those whatever. As opposed to, I, don't, I just don't see it happening. So what do they do instead? They push all kinds of evil on you. All kinds of abortion, gender fluid, all this crap. Dude. You see what I'm saying? They push it on us. So that way you will say, hey, I'm just going to be, I'm, like I posted that video from Owen Benjamin today. How he said, look, we're going to take away your food. And then if you want food, you're going to have to perform for us. And he was feeding his goats, essentially. He said, I'm, I didn't feed them yesterday. They weren't, they're giving me a hard time for milking them. So I said, okay. And I hear, said, here's some food. And they said, oh, okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. So basically the same thing here is we're going to give you all these luxuries that you're accustomed to and then we're going to take them away. And 
if you want it back, you're going to have to do what we say. I tell you, make it see it's a mile away. It's not really a whole lot you can do to stop it other than just say, I'm not, I'm just, I don't want to subscribe to this. I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to do anything. I mean, just, I don't want to be part of the game. You know, the only way to win is not to play. You're going to have to play a summer guard. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to go to Costco. You're going to have to go to wherever, get your oil, you know, got to fill up the gas, you know, you got to pay the electricity bill. But at the end of the day, the best way is just not to play. And I don't really know what that means. I mean, you know, find a local farm and all that. I get none of this stuff is cheap, though. That's the issue. The issue is that we're so accustomed to this luxury. You know, I, I, you know, affluenza is a big issue. I'm look, I'm biggest freaking fraud of all. You get accustomed to this luxury lifestyle. And you're like, man, I, I like being, able to, you know, hit Amazon and have stuff delivered in a in a day or two. I like being able to watch, you know, splurge on Netflix. I don't do that very much, but I know some people do. I like being able to do YouTube. I like it. I like being able to go on a vacation. I like it. <clears throat> I like that. And uh. You can't do that 100 years ago. And so the question is, well, what happens when they say you can't do that unless you, you know, have your social credit score, unless you do this? Yeah, I don't know the answers. I just know the U.N. is tentacles are knee deep in the United States. 60 jurists. That's it. 60 jurists of the U.N. have said we want to be able to have sex with children. I mean, that's just what they said outright. And you can say all day long, you know, talk about Joseph and Mary. You talk about Muhammad. You can talk about. Hell, Gandhi and all that stuff. You say all day long, well, these people had sex with children. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about Joseph and Mary. I, I don't know. I mean, but James was Jesus's brother. Assume Joseph was James's dad. I don't actually, I don't know. Was James, was, was Joseph James's dad? Because, yeah, because that was his half brother. So if, if God was uh, Jesus's dad, yeah, that makes sense. So I don't know how old Mary was when she had, I don't know. I'm just saying that, you know, we have a tradition historically of having sex with young people. But those are in old days where people had huge families because we didn't have the technology to have food provided to us and all that. People died, infant mortality rates are through the roof and all that. Those days are gone. So to make this legitimate is just is nothing but a way to get peds to be able to satisfy their fiddler's needs, if you know what I'm saying. They want to fiddle with young uh, men, uh, young boys, probably mostly. Who are also uh, have no father figures around. It's freaking evil, dude. It's uh, similar to what the Catholic priest did when they prayed on people uh, who were lost and young, and, and the people trust them. It's freaking disgusting. It's disgusting behavior, and it, it's freaking these guys suck. And I hate them, man. I'm, it's not good of me to hate. Um, I'm not worried about China in the least. Not in the least. Yeah. I think that's one hundred percent. Prepping is the best answer, and learn to live frugal and off, I don't know, but off the land. It's gonna be tough, but I think uh, no, these guys. It's, it's not about being investigated because it's just because it's not. It doesn't matter who's gonna do the investigation. This is what the UN and they are in our air. They are in our country. What's Dan Crenshaw? Is he gonna freaking fight the UN? No, because he's part of the World Economic Forum, dude. I mean, Tulsi Gabbard, part of, I mean, she said she wasn't. I don't know. I don't, I mean, maybe she wasn't. I don't know that to be true. I mean, she says she will. I'll take her word for it. Who's a, but tons. I mean, look, Brian Kemp went to the World Economic Forum, you know, to kneel down before them to beg for money. It's just all the, the politics aren't going to do it. That's the issue. There's got to be some other way to do it. And I don't know what it is. And then, you know, that's why I say all the time about my own investments. I don't know if I want to be engaging these people you see what i'm saying like this is evil i am i like literally think i'm like am i engaging in evil by investing in companies that uh that promote this crap and i i, I and i don't know it's a challenge oh dan crenshaw i oh, oh i can't stand that guy dude how these guys hoodwinked us so for so long and by the time the uh the the Freaking Kurt went up is too late. I now look. I'm I fell for Dan Crenshaw too. Dude. I fell for it all. Sadly, a good portion of the Republican Party still falls for it. You know, even after COVID, I I just don't. I literally don't understand how people on the right can fall for it now anymore. It's weird to me. I just it's weird. I, I like oh my. I was like, dude, you know, I don't trust the government except when it comes to NASA, the CDC, the FBI, and the military. Then I trust the government. Like okay. Problem is the average American can't put two into uh, one hundred percent, Marie. Food and heat must be the company's fault, not the government. 
Yeah, they can't. Uh, it's yeah, one of, and they're gonna ban TikTok as if TikTok's the issue, one hundred percent. But I, I, I think the most Americans, they, they've, we've, we've, uh, they're just not that bright anymore. Not that bright. Not that bright. If squatters sit on my lawn, I'll do my part of being green and use non-chemical natural. You know, but they'll see that's the issue. Can someone show it on United Nations? I'm not sure what you're saying. UN World uh, all need to go. US is I 100. But we've we've been all this goes back to bankrupts the world. Look at my man Liberty. See Liberty, you get this. You get this. You get it. That's all right. So Liberty, he's here. He's here. You know, taking the punches. You know, I just give Liberty a couple jabs. He jabs back. It's good. Can't make this stuff up. Consensual is not possible. It's insane. It's insane. Where do I find it on the United Nations website? Well, I just showed you. Dude. I literally just showed you where it was. So I'll show you again. All right. So we're going to come back. Come back here. This is the thing. They're not going to say, not for the love of gosh, the love of the good Lord. They're not going to say explicitly, here it is. They're going to say, you have to do some grunt work to find it. So what the grunt work you got to do, you got to go to anonymous conservative. And I highly encourage you all to go to anonymous conservative blog every morning for your fix of conspiracy theories that turn out to be not so conspiratorial anymore, don't they? Anonymous conservative blog. We're going to start here. And we'll put it in the thing. And, you know, some of this, you might be offended by some of this guy. You might say, that guy's a little bit too crazy for me. I, okay. We are now reading verbatim from the UN that they want to say it is illegal to have sex with minors. Um, to not, it's illegal, well, I should say, it should be legal to have sexual relations with minors. So as much as you might say a guy like anonymous can serve, I don't know who's got it. It's crazy. Is that as crazy as the world we're living in now through the United Nations? The answer, of course, is no. Now, some of you guys aren't going to be tough enough to be able to deal with being called a conspiracy theorist. You're not going to be tough enough to be able to deal with you know people saying, oh, you're crazy. I, I tell you, I get it, man. You're not going to be able to deal with it because people are going to call you nuts. People are going to say you're John Birchers. They're going to say you're racist. They're going to say, you. Uh, look, dude, if that bothers you at this stage of the game, I don't know what to tell you, man. I, I'm so, that has no, I literally don't care. I was on a, uh, who was I with? Uh, I was on a debate, not a debate. I was watching this video again against Einstein yesterday. And uh, people are just idiotic people defending Einstein. And I just, and they're just laughing. They say, you don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Because they're stupid. Dude. They're stupid. They don't want to know. They literally, this is their God. You see what I'm saying? And as such, they can't be challenged. And you're sitting there thinking, they'll call, you're an uneducated fool. You need more than a third degree, a third grade education, blah, blah, blah. I forgot one guy who said uh, they proved time dilation. I don't know if my man Alan's here. I said, where? And they said, all over the place. I said, where? All over the place. I said, yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. It's, it's silly. Dude. They didn't prove time dilation at all. Just because they said they did, if you actually dive into it, you recognize it's all full of crap. But no one's going to call you because no one does. No one's going to take the time. They don't. They want the freaking Twitter. Why is Twitter so prominent? Because it's that little, I don't know what, 240 words or characters, something like that. It's headline. Headline, George W. Bush is an evil scumbag. Joe Biden is the best thing since sliced bread. See, the New York Times said it. That's crazy. All right, so we're going to go to anonymous conservative. And we're going to type in, because I can't remember, United Nations right here. And then we're going to go right here. Here is the Twitter thing from the United Nations, which I'll show you. This guy did the grunt work. And he's our version of a James, what's that guy's name? James O'Keefe. And you'll see, UN. That's United Nations right here. So for people to say, I can't find it. Well, here it is right here for all to see. All to see. I'll post it on here right now. And again, as I said before, there's some UN. That's the United Nations logo. UN AIDS. This is the United Nations. All right. So when people say, but it doesn't say that because people who would say that aren't very bright. I'm sorry because it does. Those people just don't want to do the due diligence. They're too lazy. So we're going to scroll down. And as I said before, it doesn't say we want to decriminalize sex between minor, uh, for minors here. It doesn't say that. 
But they say right there, the eight marsh principles. All right. See, the eight marsh principles, as they're called, they had a human rights-based approach, approach to laws criminalizing conduct in relation to sex, drug use. It doesn't say sex with minors, but that's what it is, the eight marsh principles. So, but people are too lazy. Dude. People are too lazy. They won't do it. They won't click on that. So you click on that, and that's what you come up with. What I just showed you is principle number 16. Now, you could say they made it up. Okay, that's fine. Okay, you can say whatever you want. Can we start using a little bit of, of effort, though, as opposed to just headline stuff? And this is why I'm so frustrated with Liberty 1776. I said, Liberty, you didn't know what you're talking about. And you're perpetuating this thing on Social Security with average wage index. You don't know what you're talking about. And it's frustrating to me because I'm sitting there thinking, I, I, we've destroyed this a thousand times a Sunday for the last two years. They're going on three years now. And I literally can't believe we're still even having this debate about the AWI up till 67. I said, that never came. So, so why are we, like, why? It's weird to me, man. I don't get why we we focus always on the negative. And I get it. The negative sells tickets. All right, so Jeremy, I'll put the link here to the UN document in Rumble because I didn't put it there. And again, you're going to have to click on, you're going to have to click on where it says the eight marked principles. Oops. I did it. If you don't click, and that will be gone. Remember how BLM, I, I will never forget this. BLM, they're on their front page. They say, we want to destroy, what was the, uh, the nuclear family. We want to destroy the nuclear family. Because they're all rabble rousers, you know, gay rights, what the BLM was. The, the second iteration of BLM was a bunch of gays um, who want to destroy the nuclear family. They're Marxist trained. They want to destroy the nuclear family. And when that finally came out, not very long after the BLM second iteration, because the first iteration was uh, pigs in a blanket fly, frying like bacon, and no one, to, you know, we didn't take kindly to that. But I guess after George Floyd, who's our hero, St. George, uh, we, we took kindly to BLM. And the second iteration was gay women who wanted to destroy and take down the nuclear family. It said it explicitly on the front page. Front page. Now people still today to this day say, no, it doesn't. I said, oh. and you say, well, it's on the way back. I don't even know what's on the way back machine. Remember who controls the way back machine? Remember Taylor Lorenz? Yeah, her uncle controls the way back machine. So any negative stuff on Taylor Lorenz, Lorenz is off the way back machine because her uncle controls it. So I have no clue if the BLM initial you know, thing on the website says they want to take down the nuclear fan. I don't know if it's on the way back machine or not. I don't care. The facts were, they said explicitly, they're Marxist. They want to tear down the nuclear family. And they've done a good job in the black community, I will tell you. 70, what, 5% of the you know, blacks, the children being born are illegitimate. You know, a third is now white being born illegitimate. That's crazy. <coughs> um, yeah, that's all I can do. He likes to pick the unlikely of characters be heroes in the Bible. Yeah, if you read Jeremiah, so it's interesting. So I'm, now I'm on Ezekiel. So Ezekiel wasn't chosen by God till he's like 30 years old, where Jeremiah, on the other hand, was chosen like basically as an infant. Remember, Jeremiah, he threw in his cistern, he got jailed, he got beaten, and he got freaking, you know, he got rocked. His world was rocked by all the people. He said, look, Jerusalem's going to fall. Jerusalem's going to fall. Jerusalem's going to fall. He told, you know, Nebuchadnezzar is going to come and, you know, just basically run this place. And ultimately, God will take his revenge on Nebuchadnezzar, but Jerusalem is going to fall. And so the Zedekiah, which was, oh man, the, the uncle of, of jo, Jehoiakim, I'm gonna, Jehoiakim uh, when he got put out, is Jehoiakim and Jehoiachin, and then is Zedekiah, 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 I'm sure I'm butchering those names, sue me. Wait, so he came in. He said, Jeremiah, why do you keep saying this? And Jeremiah said, look, dude, you can't go to Egypt. You've got to stay here. And God will you know, let Nebuchadnezzar, because Nebuchadnezzar was chosen by God, to take over this. Don't go to Egypt or else you're going to bring hell and torment on your people. And Zedekiah said, screw you. And he you know, basically freaking, get out of here, uh, Jeremiah. And Jeremiah got rocked. He didn't die at that point. But anyway, so then what happened? Nebuchadnezzar took over. Jerusalem, 
and Zedekiah got his eyes put out. He watched all his kids, his children, get executed right in front of his very eyes, and he you know, spent the rest of his life in prison where he died. You know, so God chose Jeremiah. It wasn't easy for Jeremiah. And Ezekiel, I'm just starting now. Now Ezekiel was just hanging out my own business when he was when they were exiled from Jerusalem. And Ezekiel's like, dude, all of a sudden he got this flash of you know God and angels and four these four heads of horses and owls and lions and a human. And this wheel, like, it was crazy, man. And you're sitting there thinking, wow. And then there's another uh, prophet back then called Uriah, who actually got executed for saying Jerusalem's going to fall. Crazy. Oh, yeah, they hate us because they hate Jesus first. And they'll do whatever they can to disprove Jesus. And that's the issue. Is they're, they're trying to say, like, the idea that Jesus didn't even exist is now gaining traction. I, I Look, I, I get it. You can make an argument that Jesus rise from the dead or not. But. Whether or not that Jesus exists, I'm like, huh? That's that seems a little bit far fetched. Well, not a little bit. That's very far fetched to me. Yeah, I hate the UN. I despise the UN. Yeah. So remember, it's interesting, Kirk. So, uh, yeah. Well, Jeremiah, I'm, I'm exactly. But how many of us are going to want to live like Jeremiah? Exactly. Welcome to. The king of Babylon, yet God won't destroy. Well, we don't know. We don't know what God's intentions are. That's the thing. That's the interesting thing about the Bible. You know, this is, you know, historical stuff. We don't know who is the chosen one today. I mean, are there prophets amongst us out there? I don't know. You don't know. No one knows. But we don't know what God won't do. No one knows. Yet God won't destroy it. Maybe he doesn't need to destroy it because we're destroying it on our own. But when you actually read Jeremiah, um, the ending, it's it's pretty bad for Jerusalem. And I mean, this, you know. Children eating their parents, parents eating their children. It's 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 some it's sick, sick stuff, man. And the sad thing is a lot of people will say, Well, why would God allow that to happen? I'm sitting there thinking, because God said, if you don't turn change your ways, this will happen. I mean, he said, change your ways, or else this will happen. I mean, it's pretty explicit. He said, Don't keep doing what you're doing, don't take false idols. You know, I just it's I, and I'm sitting there thinking. Well, God, you know, basically he allowed babies' heads to get bashed in. Well, he allowed it because he said, if you don't change your ways, bad things are going to happen. And when bad things happen, don't blame it on me. Blame it on you. Because I told you. I told you. You're responsible. If your kids, I'm just say you leave a freaking a needle around of, of fentanyl and your kids take and inject it. Is that God's fault? Was he supposed to get in there and say, no, we're going to intervene? No, it's your fault for leaving it around. It's, I just I find it interesting how many people weren't uh, you know want to blame God. I'm like, why? It's like don't blame me, blame that guy. I'm like, okay. Anyway, so Matthew, I just learned this that ninety percent of Matthew is uh, of Mark is in Matthew. So basically, Mark and Matthew are identical to ninety percent. Isn't that interesting? Um, U.S. isn't mentioned in the New Testament. Well, I mean, again, we we might have uh, what we're seeing today could be the documentation for future. Biblical um, historics, histor historians to, to talk about. So anyway, so that's what I want to talk about there. So I got some other stuff. Too. I do want to talk about some financial planning stuff, um, which I thought was pretty interesting. Well, here's the issue, Studio Owl, is that that's a pretty cool owl. I love owls. They are freaking crazy looking. I love them. Um, here's the issue that I was... Uh, yeah, well, I will do Babylon 100%. 100%. Um, we are a sovereign nation. Um, well, we used to be. Now, I don't you know who really knows. I don't know. But the problem is with a one world government um, from the West, and particularly, you know, from the EU to uh, in the United States, is that we certainly have lost our sovereignty. That's a fact. And, uh, and, you know, who owns us? I, I don't really know. But, you know, I just sit there and I'm, I'm reading, you know, like leftist crap. I'm like, they don't like sovereign nations. They want one world government. The National Council of Churches is just my ire right now because I just, you know, uh, listen to the people promoting the National Council of Churches. They don't want U.S. sovereignty. Why? Because the sin of slavery they can't forgive is crazy. I'm like sitting there thinking. Dude, it's so weird that we are the only game in town when it comes to slavery where every other nation had slaves, dude. I, like the Dutch, 
think the Dutch didn't have slaves? I mean, for heaven's sake. But yet they get it, you know, they can just wipe their hands. Away. It's, it's so weird. The hatred for us, us being sovereign. And what they do is they say, yes, but you have the original sin of slavery. As in every freaking other person on, on mankind. In fact, I just, I can't tell you. You read about the Trail of Tears. Blacks held their Indians as slaves. People are like, no, they didn't. Yes, they did. Unless you just deny what was written historically. That's fine. You can deny that. But we have blacks holding Indians as slaves. It's crazy. And yet the only people that get blamed are white people. I'm like, everyone had slaves, dude. Does, does not anyone not know what happened in freaking Mexico and you know Peru and all this stuff? It's insanity. Yeah, exactly. The Dutch started the slave trade. Well, for Europeans, but we had slaves all over the world. I'm thinking, wait a second. Did the Jews, were they not enslaved by the Egyptians? So how come we're not blaming the Egyptians? What why where's the Egyptians giving the Jews freaking reparations it's crazy i don't understand but the egyptians are brown and black people so they have somehow get a moral a moral equipped better than us you know, us paleys it's, it's nuts you're sitting there thinking this is insanity on steroids 100 absolutely it's crazy and i'm sitting there thinking why is it like why is it the united states and the only thing I could, and I'm Dutch, says Cheryl, right on. Look at Cheryl, crushing out there, those crazy Dutch people. Why is it that it's like, like these people have hated America and its sovereignty for so many years? I don't get it. I, I just, I literally don't. I mean, the reason is because they want one world government, because one world government is Marxist control. That's what they want. And they're getting it. They're getting it. Now, people say, well, you know, Putin, I'm like, well, let's just put it this way. Is Putin the worst thing that could be happening right now? I don't want to say too much about that because uh, I'll get banned. Is Putin the worst? Dude, oh, my goodness. You guys see this one thing. Liberty, you'll love this. There's a, uh, <laughs> there's a guy, some black Israelite, Israelite, whatever they call it, in New York City. You know, Jews own everything. Jews, blah, blah, blah. Jews are telling me everyone what to do. He's, it's, man, it's funny as hell. So they're videotaping this guy. The Jews, the Jews, the Jews, the Jews. And uh, <laughs> so some guy walks up. The Jews control everything. They own all the businesses. They own all the stuff. They tell us what to do. And uh, this guy walks up. And I don't know if he's Jewish. And I goes, hey, man, I'm Jewish. You got to leave. You know. And he goes, what? I mean, he goes, no, I'm Jewish. I own everything. You got to leave. The black guy says, I told you the Jews own everything. And the guy's, I know I'm Jewish. I own everything. And so you got to leave. And then uh, and the, the black guy left. <laughs> Hell, man. I was laughing. I was like, oh, that was great. The black guy's like, right, the Jews. They just walked away because the Jews own everything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the Jews, come on, man. The Jews don't own everything. Give me a break. Oh, they, I mean, Rockefeller Museum is in Israel, folks. There's a Rockefeller thing in like the, Antarctica. Rockefeller wasn't a Jew. I'm mean, just, come on. Let's stop that. It's silly. I mean, there's. <laughs> I just, do the Jews own more than their population? Yes. Uh, have the Jews been good money managers? Yes. We can learn a lot from the Jews. Absolutely. We can learn a lot. Same group preference. Maybe Christians should try that. I'm just saying. Maybe, you know, don't charge interest to each other, as the Bible says. I'm just saying. Maybe do what they did with Einstein. Einstein was a Jew. Where do you think he got his money from while well, he's, you know, trying to claim to fame? From Jewish relations who made money. Maybe we should all try that. Oh, my goodness. I don't understand. It's like the Jews are a wonderful place to say that's how we should be. Same group preference. Just read about Einstein. You say Einstein was because he'd make no money when he was a clerk. I got itch my shoulder. When he was a, oh, I got a bug in there, like a freaking tick or something. Like that. He was a clerk of the Swedish um, patent office. He wasn't making anything. You know, he, Einstein was an asshole, by the way, to his wife. He was a mean mofo to his wife. He wasn't making any money. How did he get by? He had rich uncle who was Jews who made a lot of money that provided him a little bit of income. Something we could all learn by. I don't get it, man. Um, I mean, we all, yeah, I mean, I sounds a crook. Everybody knows this. But actually, what the problem is, is that everyone wants to hate on the Jews. I'm like, no, learn from them. Learn from those people. Now, obviously, we got rich people up here, scumbags, you know, Jews, Catholics, freaking Protestants, whole thing. I get that. 
But that's not the Jews. That's just scumbag rich people who want to control the world. It's not like religious people, for heaven's sake, man. It's crazy. Anyway, I, 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 look, that's not to sit there and say they're, all Jews are good. And all Catholics aren't good. I have to look at our own Pope, man. It's nuts. Uh, so anyway, I just, I don't get in that. I don't like that. I'm like, no, we can learn a lot from the Jews who freaking, I'm telling you, same group preference. Don't charge interest to your own people. You know what I'm saying? If you want to charge interest to other people, be more, by all means, do it. But to say that the Jews own everything is just silly. Silly on his face. And I get the Rothschilds. I get it. 100%. But how do you overlook the Rockefellers? How do you overlook the Morgans? You know, how do you overlook the people who even predece- uh the predecessors of the Rothschilds, you know, from the Roman Empire. I mean, you think that money just evaporated? I mean, I don't know. It's crazy. Um, absolutely. 100%. Exactly. Jewish families stick together and help each other. 100%. That's a good trait. 100%. 100%. I don't, that's, I just don't like that word. It's like, ah, much more to him for control of the property. Uh, I'm not sure what you're saying, man. Yeah, look, I get the Rothschilds, but I, I tell you, don't just tell me the Rothschilds and not say the Rockefellers. I, I tell you, who did worse for America, the Rothschilds or the Rockefellers? And without question, it's the Rockefellers. Without question, Rockefellers are still to this day are evil, evil, evil. And I'm just sitting there, why in America we focus on the Rothschilds? Yeah, they control Europe. I mean, I'm sure they're all freaking inbreds with each other, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, and again, all the, you know, the uh, the Vanderbilts. I don't. But it just, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't. That's uh, we can't. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, come on, man. I, I don't. The jab was bad, but not the mark. One hundred percent. I that's I people got way over the top on that. I, I, of course, I think they did that deliberately. By the way, um, uh, Jeremy on Rumble says Genesis nineteen. Oh wait, am I still okay? Genesis nineteen four through ten. That's the world we live in now. I don't have my book right next to me, so I can't read it. But uh, um, the Portuguese one hundred percent trade with African tribes. Uh, for other tribes, it's like one hundred percent, and the African tribes had slaves. Uh, we all know this, but somehow, we, uh, it's just it's crazy. All right, um, no, you can't criticize Swarms. <laughs> How dare you? That means you're anti-Semitic. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's actually fun seeing um, Owen Benjamin. Who had a you know a, a year or two of, you know, before I was listening to him where he was not happy with Jews, and he's since come around a long a lot. This is actually funny, man. And this is before I listened to him. He's like, oh, I love the Jews now. The Jews, he goes because now he's on an anti-Christian diatribe because of the idiocy. Like for instance, Catholic Church. I com- and I completely agree with this. If the if the uh, the wine is the literal blood of Jesus. And we need it for sustenance, all right? If, if there's some kind of trans, what they call it, transmorification or something like that on the altar, where the wine becomes the actual blood of Jesus um, that we need, then how in the Lord's good name do you allow the CDC to tell you you can't go to church and get your wine? That's li- the little blood of Jesus or the body of Jesus. I, I, I completely agree with that, what Owen Benjamin was saying about that. It's like, wait. If that's the true blood of God, of Jesus, and the true body of Christ that has been transmorigified, whatever that's, that is, <laughs> that we need, and you're going to say, well, the CDC says I can't have it, so I'm not going to have it. That's not a very faithful uh, issue, are you? No, you're not. And, and yet many a Catholic said, yeah, okay, the CDC tells me not to, so I don't need Jesus' blood after all. Something's gone way wrong there, my friends. That's just a fact. And so anyway, Owen Benjamin says, it's funny, baby, because he cracks me up. He's like, nah, dude, the Jews get it, man. The Jews are crushing. <laughs> I think it's funny as hell. <laughs> because people still say Owen Benjamin's anti-Semitic because some of his diatribes from five years ago. People still say I'm anti-Bonds because of my diatribes from five years ago. Things change, man. And, uh, and now the, the world as we see it has changed dramatically since 2020. And the Christians that we held – and high esteem have just fallen by the wayside, sadly. And, um, you know, uh, the Amish, the Mennonites, you know, the Brethren Church, I imagine, um, you know, some base Catholics, probably not many, 
um, you know, there's a couple good guys out there, you know, they're preaching 100%. Uh, you know, some, I'm sure a lot of some good base Jews to firm, uh, Muslims, some did too, as well. Those are our people, regardless of the religion. Uh, those are the people, the ones who stood firm against the, the tyranny of 2020 and 2021. So at this stage, you say, well, I, I'm, on, I'm with those guys because I, I, I'm i Catholic, even though they they felt like a cheap suit on the, the barrage of the CDC. Or I'm with those guys who are Jewish, Muslim, and other denominations of, of uh, Christianity who stood firm. Well, I'm with those guys, and that's the way it should be. Man. Yeah, 100%. I, it's, but the churches should never have done it. I, I saw a church get fined in uh, Orange County, California, like 1.9 million. Um, I just, you know, that, that you can't be in California. That's all there is to it. Man, I got a big itch of it. I was out there watering the plants. I hope I get some aphids on. Um, oh yeah, dude. I, uh, I mean, first you got to read the Bible. I mean, you open up the good book and the Old Testament, you see all kinds of wonderful stuff on. On how to manage money, man. It's great. Yeah, Dr. Zelenko. He was a big Jew. Love Dr. Zelenko. And he died. I don't know how he died. Uh, I don't agree with the human leaders of religion, no matter how bad or, or weak, make the doctrine wrong. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I said that, Joe. I'm not saying the doctrine is wrong because the leaders are scumbags. I'm just saying at the end of the day, if... You believe not you specifically, but if you're a Catholic says I need that body and blood of Christ, but I'm not going to go because the CD says says I can't go because you know COVID, you know, uh, you know, breathing the air is bad. Uh, that's uh, seems to be a little bit where it seems to be that bloody body and blood of Christ isn't as as worthwhile as we were told to believe. Um, Right. No, Rockefellers, dude. Rockefeller. The House Rock. And I'm going to show it to you again if I can find it. Dude, if, if, is anyone still on? Yeah. So, Jeremy, you like this. All right. So, here's Genesis. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men that came in, yeah, this night? Bring them on to us and let me know him. God went out the door and he shut the door after him. Yeah, that's okay. There you go. Right on, man. And uh, they try to get uh, jiggy with the, uh, with, the, with the angels, didn't they? They try to get jiggy with those angels. Let me show you the House of Rockefeller book if I can find the PDF. I tell you guys, you read this thing, you will. Um, oh man, how do I find that Rockefeller? I just look at my bookmark. I know what I got on here. Hold on a second. We're gonna find it. Hold on a sec. We're gonna find the House of Rockefeller. Uh, this is such a good book to read. You can download the free PDF, House of Rockefeller. Um, the guy's in a PDF. Uh, yeah, it's right here. All right, sweet. Yeah, this one's fantastic. Read this book right here. Oh, man, I think Morris Beale, House of Rockefeller. Yeah. Actually, I got this as a book format too, but I, I read the thing. Man, I tell you, man, this is. You want to rock your world? You read the House of Rockville. It's written like in 1955 or something like that. I got the, the book back here. I haven't, I, I've already read the PDF, but I also want to get a hard copy of the book. So here's a PDF. And I printed it off right here. Oops, stop sharing. And I bought it as a book. So here it is, House of Rockville PDF. It's fantastic. There's uh, so much just freaking awesome stuff in here. And again, this is written like in 1955 or something like that. How a shoe sprint string was run into 200 billions of dollars in two generations in 19, literally 200 billion dollars in 1955. Talks about the aluminum trust. Yeah. Lots of good stuff here. 
show you what else he talks about here, my man Morris. One second. It's, it's nuts. How the how the tentacles of the Rockefeller clan, um, oil, world politics, and communism. It's you know I mean once you read this you will you'll never be the same. Like man, everything you thought you knew about like the history of World War II and stuff, you've been we've been all fooled. That's all there is to it. Um, that's just great. Nelson Rockefeller for president. The Milk Trust, right there, the Milk Trust. And you're not, you're not even going to want to know the Food Trust, the Drug Trust, the Food Trust and the Drug Trust. Ooh, and that leads you right into here. Shh, don't say this out loud. By Ida Onoroff and uh, Eleanor McBean. Again, you got to get this in the PDF. Ah, oh, dude. From 1977. Yeah, big lids back then. It was the conservatives who pushed fortization and jabs and whatnot. It's crazy. Um, yeah, the bankers. Yeah, but we don't have to be miserable. I mean, that's the thing. Just you just let them do what they're gonna do, and you do what you're gonna do, and just move on. You know what I'm saying? The House of Rockefellers, yeah, right here. I don't know if you can get that or not, Jeremy, but it's great. Love the House of Rockefeller. All right. I was going to do some other stuff, but uh, allegedly, no, just allegedly, that's it. Allegedly white. Oh, man, that's good. I like that. A creature from, ooh, there you go. Look at my man, Liberty. All right, Liberty. So I take back my jabs at you. Just as allegedly, that's it. I don't take back my jabs. You can take it. A good book's a creature from Jekyll Island. Ooh, let's check this one out. Nice. Look at look at my man Liberty. All right, a creature from Jekyll. Ooh, the creature from Jekyll Island. Okay, nice. Let's take a second look at. Right, let's take a gander. Let's gander on over. Let's gander. Uh, thing here. Hmm. Doesn't give us like a preview or anything. Uh, by making it appear to be a problem in the national economy, rather private banking practice, the door could be open for use of tax. Yeah, oh, I like that already. Demand of money by other banks it's called currency. Green. Okay, cool. Good, good, good. All right, sweet. Looks pretty good, man. I like it. I like it. Creature from Jekyll Island. Yeah, look at all you guys. Sounds good. Allegedly we landed on the moon. Exactly. Exactly, Joe. Allegedly. Oh, my goodness. Allegedly we use atomic bombs in Hiroshima. Allegedly. How dare you, Josh? We got the pictures. Do we? Do we have the pictures of Hiroshima? Do we? Or is it Nagasaki? Hmm. And who how many people reported in Hiroshima? Yeah. Do we really want to go down that road right now? I don't, because it's been a few week, a few months since I've actually dived into that. But um, you should. It's fun. It's fun to look at the silliness, the lies that were told us about Hiroshima, and then you just look at Dresden. You look at even San Francisco after the fire, and you're like, oh man, they all look like Hiroshima. And the facts are that very few people, if any, had actually any cancer or anything like that from the radiation. <laughs> so freaking stupid. It is. Uh, it's just kind of funny. Things are still growing. Uh, it's it's actually kind of funny. I think it was like the Red Cross building of all things stayed. Everything else got demolished. But like the Red, I can't remember. It was like the Red Cross building or something like that. Is there's enough stuff in there to make you uh, chuckle? And I tell you, once you start reading your history, you're like so the Hiroshima, because there's a guy I forgot his name who actually ate uranium. I'm drawing a blank. His name, maybe some of y'all will know. He's like, uh, what's the guy's name? I'm drawing a blank. It's like, dude, uranium's no big deal. He actually ate it. And uh, he was like part of, I don't want to say it was a Manhattan project, but it's part of something like that. Because, dude, you can eat uranium. It's no big deal. And uh, you're right on, man. All right, Liberty, you're a good guy. Appreciate you taking the punches. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. You're all right by me. 
I got, yeah, I'm gonna have to take a shower. I get itches. I feel like I got bugs crawling me now because it's outside under my trees trying to get the aphids off. I feel like they fell on me because I got aphids in my fruit trees. I kill those suckers before they kill my fruits, and no way that's gonna happen. All right, so, uh, no, 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 no. So remember, you one percent. You're making 350. That's it. So they'll certainly let people make 350. Absolutely. But if you want to get the big time, you know, if you want to be Jay Z, you're gonna have to friggin' bend over and take it. It was no other way. Like Snoop Dogg, Jay Z, all these guys, dude. They look, man. You think their talents are that good? No. They just are chosen. There's no other way around it. They said, okay, I will, I will be. I will. I want to be rich and famous. You got it, baby. And uh, yeah, my. Ooh, don't remind me of that because uh. I had, when I was in the army, um, I had chiggers. Oh my goodness, that's so racist! I had chiggers on my forearms, Cheryl. Oh my goodness! So you know, we got in the field. I just remember coming back, and I just all these it itched like hell, man. I was like, ugh. So I went to the uh, the dock up there in the army. They're like, just put some that pink oil, that pink stuff on it. Not Pepsi Bismol, but some pink uh, Calmine, something like that oil. Then do crap. I'm like, dude. Eventually, it went away. But I was like, for a couple of weeks, I just had oh, horrible itches in my form. It was nasty. Ooh, manipulated man by Esther Biller. All right, look at my man Carl, the manipulated man. The manipulated. It's sad that we look at automatically at Amazon as if Amazon. Is it going to ban stuff? What's it? Uh, I see a limit. Uh, hold on a second. What's the chick's name? I wrote it by Esther. Esther Villar. Esther Villar. Okay. Manipulated man by Esther Villar. Send it there. So we're typing Esther. I'm not showing anything for her on Amazon. I don't know, I'll spell it wrong. Calmine, that's what Calmine lotion. Yep, yep. Yeah, but I mean, but do you even want to be that wealthy? You want the sword of Damocles, whatever it's called, over you? I don't know. I mean, just can you imagine just being like, they're going to get me, they're going to get me, they're going to get me, I'm going to lose. Eh, I don't, I just, I just think you recognize for what it is that the world is falling apart and from the world that we know, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. I mean, just other than, I, again, just pay off your debt, you know, live, live a little bit more frugally and, um, you know, don't go protest and, you know, just don't fight the powers that be because they're going mean, to, I hate to say they're going to win, but you know, we don't know what's going to happen. Just, you know, you gotta, you gotta survive, you know, you gotta survive to live another day. All right, cool. All right, good. Let me find Esther. Villars, is it three L's? Sort of Damocles, Democles, whatever that person's name is. Damocles. Look, I, I'm from Maine, dude. I, I, I don't pronounce stuff right. Villar. There, oh, right there. There it is, Carl. Manipulated man. Esther on eBay is used. Let me see if you can get that P. Ooh. Oh, there, PDF. Right there. There it is. I think. Yes, yeah, sweet. All right. So here's the manipulated man. I'll put the link in the notes. Democles. I don't even know how you say it, man. Democles, Damocles, sort of Uriah Heap. There it is. So there's the manipulated man by Esther Villar. So you spelled it wrong, freaking Carl. Jeez, man. Yeah. Remedial spelling, E S T H E R V I L A R. Carl spelled it E S T E R V I L L L A R. Democles, Democles. There you go. All right, cool. All right. What did I say? Damocles? <laughs> that's, dude, that's why you come here, man. That's first rate stuff right there. All right, so what you guys got on Rumble here? I'm going to get out of here. Barnes and Noble has a manipulated man. Where do I start with nuclear? All right, so 
I will show you if you guys are so interested. First time I heard that was Jess was interested. Okay, you never heard of the Sword of Damocles? That's well, pretty interesting, actually. It's almost like the Faustian bargain. The Faustian bargain. Like, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the Simpsons version of the Faustian bargain, but uh, a Simpsons version where Homer goes to hell and he goes, Oh, you like donuts, huh? He goes, Yes. He goes, Have all the donuts in the world. And you're like, you know, that's not what you really want. But in this case, Homer was like, more. And the devil's like, what? And he's like, more, more. I'm from Upstate. You're getting these messages instantly. That's not alleged technology. Well, it's 15 second delay. I'm not sure what you're talking about, though, Cheryl. What do you mean it's not alleged? Are you saying they're from satellites what what are you saying there i don't get it what, what are you saying cheryl um all right so i'm going to show you something here jeremy we're going to go to uh uh we're going to go to crow triple seven we're going to go to let me log in oops and we're going to go to crow triple seven now this is hard what listen here I mean, what I mean hard is because you got to be paying attention, dude. You got to be paying attention because there's this, these guys talk. I mean, it's, it's nuts what, what these guys go into. Uh, so you can't listen to this while just kind of, you know, meandering. This is, you got to be really paying attention or else you'll, be, you'll miss a lot of good points. And it's, that's why I don't listen to very many episodes because it's tough to really get in the, the you know, uh, the, I listen to, to some and I'll download them, but you really got to be involved. And that's, that's for me, that's kind of a challenge. I, when I get involved, I need to read, frankly. But anyway, so we're going to go to uh, um, ooh, Mike Williams at Sage of Quay. Uh, talks about Paul McCartney. Oh, that's pretty interesting. And I'm not all that interested in the Beatles. Rediscovering frequency and vibration over and over again. Uh, cleaning out with Coffee Works Wonders. Now, this, I can, no way I can do this. You take a, uh, you know, what's it called? Uh, a thing on your uh, you your what's it where you put in your butt, man? Uh, and, ain't, and uh, what's that thing where you do in your butt? Whatever it's called, uh, amoeba or something like that. The coffee. I was like, oh, I couldn't do that. What's it called? You like a uh, oh man, I can't remember. We, we do some with your butt. Uh, you uh, some we wash out. I can't remember. Uh, uh, beneficial frequencies and vibrations. In the age of electricity, ah, oh, so much good stuff on here. Anyway, let's look at Hiroshima, it's a rocky world, dude. Let's just take a look there. No nukes at the crossroads. Uh, right here. Duck and cover, no more nuclear nonsense. Full, we talk about Hiroshima right here. So we click on this guy, and uh, that's, that's freaking. Uh, let's look at mercury and nukes as they go hand in hand in creating the myth known as nuclear weapons. And I tell you guys, there's a lot of stuff in here that you're gonna have a hard time disproving. Uh, an enema, that's what it was. A co I was like, I don't think I could do that. Um, Emma, yeah, right on. Thanks for the look at my man, Jamie. Yeah. So with Crow Triple Seven, I mean, it's just there's so much stuff. And actually, what I thought was pretty cool was uh, we're gonna look at my man Mark Devlin. Oh, dude, this is crazy, Devlin. Oh, guess name. I'm sick. Because this is a uh, Mark Devlin right here. Magical, oh, he's got Mark Devlin on three times. Count the ways, the soundtrack of our lives. Uh, let's see what he says here. One second. Stop sharing that. All right, anyway, there's more than MCI when we consider going and holding the human mind. Anyway, there's uh, Mark Devlin has got a great podcast. And again, I, I don't really listen that much for you. Uh, dude, tons of conspiracies. Hiroshima, uh, you know, the Rockefellers. We talked about the Rothschilds. Um, right now we're talking about um, music. 
how music's been, you know, like the Beatles. Um, so we got uh, the entire world is a stage, but now we know that nearly all A-list players have bloodlines in common. Many share a family tree with presidents and so-called royalty. Then there's a military connection that's some to so common from the 1960s, particularly in the music industry. Like, uh, what's the name from the Doors? You know, I'm talking about uh, Jim Morrison. His dad was like the admiral who uh, pr promoted the uh, the Gulf of Tonkin fraud, whatnot. It's crazy. I mean, Mark Devlin again. As re as reflected in the episode title, music is currently in permanent freefall. We have reached a point where much of what we call music does not even incorporate melody or harmony, nor are the performers musicians. Part of this statement is nothing new and began when rock and roll began. As an example, we'll see what the example is. One second, everybody. As an example of this, the so-called king never wrote a single song, but this can be said of many pop culture figures in our time. Around the end of the Big Bang era, music and music musicianship began a permanent decline. But what is more is the integration of the social engineering audibly targeting the young. With improvements in technology, frequencies, backmasking, subliminal messaging have become commonplace. Among other less known stupefying techniques, if we look up the definition of music, we get something he talks about it. Um, actually pretty interesting stuff there. If you look at orchestra, the instrument categories as follows, strings, woodwinds, brass, and percussion. Some orchestras employ 120 skilled musicians. Suffice to say that pop music in our time does not require skilled musicians or instruments. The, whatever that word is, of the word instrument can be shown as follows, in, interior, or within, steer, to spread out, men, always equates the mind. Uh, within, so basically within, spread out within the mind. But as true as so much of our time, human interaction, skill, craftsmanship, and touch are rare every day. As electronica, robotica, darkness conquers the world. Yeah, 100%, man. That's, this guy right here, Mark Devlin, he's freaking fantastic. He's on BitChute. I'm not sure he's on Rumble. Look up, if you're on Rumble, Jamie, look up, uh, or Jeremy, look up. Oh, look at my man, Jeremy. He's fighting back. Sweet. All right, Jeremy, let's see how it goes. So Jeremy's fighting back against being let go. Uh, he submitted his uh, complaint online yesterday. Oh, I, I, we'll see how it goes, man. Oh, dude, I've been red pill for a long time. Red pill since before COVID. I mean, I was, well, I don't want to get into this too much. I still fell for the uh, military industrial complex for many years, but uh, right around right around COVID, that fell. But I was, you know, I've been anti-V for many, many years anti-climate change for many, many years. I'm not afraid that I'm white and be, I'm not ashamed of being white for many, many years. You know, I still like the white running backs. You know, I still like the white boxers for sure. Um, so I don't have any qualm supporting the white people who are in the, in the minority status, 100%. Um, yeah, that makes it racist, so be it. Then it makes you racist if you're supporting the black guy because he's a black quarterback. Um, but I've been, you know, I've, I've been, not I say red pill, but red pill in terms of, I always felt the U.S., the FBI, the CIA was always on the good side. And now I recognize that's simply not true. So if red pill men, well, I, I don't think JFK was killed by what's the name, then that was, yeah, I'm definitely red pilled in the last three years for sure. Uh, you know, up until 2019, never thought any about this stuff. I always didn't trust the V's, didn't trust the climate change people, didn't trust the gun control people, still hate, you know, Marxism and communism. Um, but I always felt that at the end of the day, America was a good guys and American people are, but so aren't the Russian people, so aren't the Chinese people, so aren't the Nigerian people. We're all the good guys. It's the bad guys are evil who controls the world to try to make us at odds. And, uh, and now I see that and you know, I'm okay with that. It is what it is, man. Nothing to do about it. Just freaking have fun. All right, my friends, I gotta go take a shower. I feel like, uh, yeah, but is it really Andrew? I mean, so baseball is a little bit more unique because you can either hit a fastball at a, or you can either hit a curve or you can't. The other team sports are not though. So we're looking at the Lakers. So my youngest loves NBA. I don't know why, but you know, I fall. So now we got a white guy named Austin Reeves on the Lakers who just dominated the last, the last yesterday or two days or something like that. He was undrafted out of Oklahoma. He's skinny. He doesn't look like anything. And, uh, and the question is, why was he undrafted? Well, because many, many basketball players are undrafted. You see what I'm saying? But the problem is, there's a guy named Isaiah Thomas Jr., by the way, who lit up the NBA, but he's too small. And so then no one wants to take him on. I'm like, why? Like, and I was telling my son, I was like, 
it's weird how Isaiah Thomas Jr. can't get a slot on the team, even though he lit up the NBA for years, and he still can. Uh, but they're going to have an undrafted guy, Austin Reeves. And it's just strange how that works. But if, so think about it. If you're a coach and there is a white cornerback at University of well, – would never even be at University of Michigan. Let's just say North Dakota State because no Division One school is going to give a white cornerback a shot. You're not going to you're not going to draft that guy. You're like he's white and he's at North Dakota State. But the reason is at North Dakota State because no one would give him a shot to begin with. You see what I'm saying? Because he's white, and then inherently they're going to say he's too slow. And you're like, but that that's huh? That's discriminatory. What I'm saying is no different than the old black quarterbacks in the old days. So the the question that for me comes in these team sports is like, who's going to get the shot and who's going to be left behind? Well, the guys will be left behind are going to be the people who are a little bit too short. A little bit wrong skin color. You see what I'm saying? And yet you look at like a guy like uh, Wes Welker. You know, he changed the old, the old NFL. Now there's tons of white receivers. There weren't any, any in the late 90s, early 2000s. But because Wes Welker became on, all of a sudden it was okay to hire. And then Bill Belichick and the, the Patriots, it was okay to hire white receivers. You know what I'm saying? And even there's a few white running backs coming up now, which is very interesting. You know, we had Danny Woodhead for the Patriots. Obviously, Chris McCaffrey, but before him, Danny Woodhead, um, uh, Hester from LSU. He's a fullback. He was a running back at LSU in the SEC. He went to the Chargers to become a fullback. You know, Alstott had a good year. Uh, that's pretty much it, man. So we haven't had any white running backs for a long time. Um, yeah, I, I haven't gone down to CIA. I, I, frankly, I'm, right now I'm too busy knee deep in the Bible, um, and I, I enjoy that. So what happens? I'll take my books on, like Einstein. I'm still reading, and uh, but I've put that to the side because Born Again Bride said you you spend a lot of time reading. That's great, but you should open the Bible. I said you know you're right, Born Again Bride. So for right now, I don't do much reading other than the Bible, and right now I'm reading the uh, the Price of Time by Edward Chancellor. And then at night, it's recent fiction. Um, is George Nuri on, but on YouTube? Oh, yeah, George Nuri. I remember that guy. All right, I got to go shower, dude. I feel like I've got bugs all over me. God bless, guys. Appreciate you hearing me out. It's all good. All good in the hood. Um, if Marie's still on here, many thanks to you, Marie, for your updating on my book. Jill, I've already emailed you, so no rush. And if Denise is still here, I don't think she is, but if she is, it's all good, man. So I've already had two people review my book. And, um, and it looks like it's pretty good. It looks like it should be ready to rock and roll here shortly. Shortly being you know a week or so, I'm thinking. Um, because it looks like two people read it and they had you know pretty good comments for it. So good stuff. Um, yeah, but in baseball though, it's kind of like tennis. I, I you can win or you can lose. So there's no, I mean, you it's like track. Are you the fastest guy in the 40 or not? It's just that simple. It, wrestling. It's a team sport, so where the prejudice comes in. But um but I will tell you, at the end of the day, baseball, Andrew, my own uh, my own experience was I was a poor kid. You know what I'm saying? My dad wasn't around. I tried out for the team against some rich kid whose dad was there, knew the coach. And he had I had this tiny little glove that my granddad had, I think he had worn when he was playing baseball in the 1940s or 50s. <coughs> I, you know, I was in my blue jeans and uh, and I was you know, poor. And this kid who was you know competing against for center field, you know, he had all the accolades and all that. I hit better, and we probably feel the same, but I remember I hit better. I was always a pretty good hitter, and uh, and I got cut. He made the team. I, I will never forget that. I said, I was in eighth grade. I said, man, the only reason he made the team is because he had connections. No other way around that, which is weird, too, because he didn't hit that great compared to me. I hit much better. And I say much better, but definitely better. And I was surprised that I got cut, but then I remembered. I said, eh, the coach wasn't really looking at the best at that point. He was really looking more at, you know, the the – you know, he wanted to appease the dad who probably could, you know, help with the financing and stuff. But it is what it is. All right. God bless, guys. Remember, all this doesn't matter. The good Lord wins in the end. And our job is to be on the side of God. It's tough, man. It's tough. But we got to do it. All right. We'll see you guys. Thanks, now.